All right, Shalom, my name is your brother Karab from GMS Miami. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rechach which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to send out a hearty Shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the Earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so in efforts of waking up hopefully the hopefully lake of the nation of Israel and Shalom to the sisters and brothers that believe as well. Okay. Um, this lesson is uh, going to be entitled No Excuses. Okay. And uh, I got a little quote here. It says, he that is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything else. You see? And now, um, is this biblical? No. You know, but you know, it ties in to certain commandments that are given, you know, in the scriptures or certain um, precepts, you know, uh, in the scriptures. Because the thing that we've been called into, okay, hey, it, there's no room for excuses, man, okay? This is pretty much uh, our walk is um, one of the most disciplined things that you can be a part of, okay? Now, is it discipline to where you have to, you know, have the corner of your bed sheet like at a 45 degree angle like in the military of course not okay but there are certain parameters that uh needed to be regarded okay uh when you come into this thing man and there's always 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 going to be an order order set up okay because the scriptures say what do all things decently and in order you see so there's going to be an order when you come into this thing man okay and um the biggest part of, uh, well, one of the biggest parts of, um, you know, uh, of what you're being judged by in the sight of the Heavenly Father is how obedient you are to those that have rule over you, you see? And I went into a lesson um, recently about, um, you know, uh, basically following, you know, taking orders, you know? And uh, when you go back in history, uh, uh, you know, antiquity or the nation of Israel, as far as the scriptures are concerned, um, that's always been the norm. That's always been the policy, and that's been the way of things. Be why? Because with uh, without order, you have what chaos. You see. So, like it says in Deuteronomy the fourth chapter, you know the law, statutes, and commandments. Roughly paraphrasing, uh, are our wisdom in the sight of the nations. Okay, but what happened? We lost our wisdom. We went away from the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay, and um. You know, the most high intended for us to be the rulers. OK, now everything that happened was by design. OK, but that was the intent. And um, of course, we didn't do that. And he, uh, you know, gave the, the, the kingdom to the bases of men. And hey, now they're ho Salakia, now there are holes in the ozone layer. OK, uh, islands, uh, island the size of Italy uh, in the ocean. You see. So. That shows that there needs to be an order. And more importantly, there needs to be a divine order that goes according to the scriptures. OK. And with that order, there is absolutely no room for excuses, man. OK. Why? Because we hey, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory. OK. And we're all in this weak ass flesh and um, we're working progress. Every last one of us are work in progress. OK. And alluding to us that. Um, I believe that's Ephesians, the second chapter, where the Most High refers to us as his workmanship. OK, so he's he's continued to work on us. And our job is to remain uh, sincere. OK, and follow orders. OK, no excuses, man. Even if you disagree, no excuses. OK, um, so let's jump into a few precepts just to edify that point. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32. Uh. So rock 32 uh, verse 17 it says a sinful man will not be reproved but find him a findeth an excuse according to his will you see so if you're constantly the brother that's making excuses man the scriptures are referring to you as a sinful man okay now guess what we all sin you know we sin we sin daily you know not willingly but we go off okay and that's why it's imperative it's imperative to, um, you know, stay on that path to become that creature that Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh is intended for us to be. Okay, and then along that path, you're gonna have to be reproved. You know, 
Like if you're in a situation or you feel in your mindset that you don't need to be reproved and you got it, then hey, you don't need to go out on the highways and hedges. You just wait on the Lord to redeem you, man. And the fact of the matter is that ain't gonna happen, okay? So we're all a work in progress. We all need to uh, attend to these scriptures, okay? And learn and grow. So we can be a part of that workmanship, okay? Our job is to make it to where the Heavenly Father can work on us, man, okay? And he does that through his men, okay? You have certain instances where the elders may make decrees, you know? No excuses, man. No excuses. You may not agree with what the decree is, but it ain't about, it ain't about you, you know? And you may not fully understand the logic behind the decree, or the order it, 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 All the way down to your camp leaders Or the men that are above you You know You may not understand Through the spirit was What's being said But hey that's, it, It's not your job At that point You know Hey the scriptures say Endure uh, uh, hardness as a, so, as a good soldier man You know And that's a part of it Getting reproved Brothers within the camp You know Or elders Or whoever it may be Getting on you Telling you Look your shit stinks man Okay, because hey, what did the scripture say? Knowledge puffeth up. You know, knowledge puffeth up. So that's gonna happen sometimes. And guess what? You're gonna you're gonna have to be reproved. And guess what? The most high use uses his his men to do it. Okay. And that's why the scriptures say the meek shall inherit the earth. Because that's a humbling thing for a man that's fighting on the line with you, okay? Uh whether it's above you or under you, to tell you, hey brother, that's off, you know, and then bring the scriptures out. You know, that's humbling, you know, but are you going to make excuses and be and be in the light of a simple man? OK, or are you going to take it and shut the hell up? You see, that's the reality of, 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 of what's going on, man. Matter of fact, um, let me see if I can find it. Okay, here we go. It's first Peter's two and nineteen. Um Yep. Uh, first Peter's two and eighteen says servants be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward the most high endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with the most high, okay? And that shows the ultimate level of integrity, man. When you know you haven't done anything wrong and you, you get buffeted for it, man, or you get checked or reproved for it and you take it on the chin, you know, and you just shut the hell up, okay? That is acceptable with the most high, man, okay? Why? Because he's orchestrating everything, man. And really, that's preparing us for what's about to happen, man. With this persecution When you when you really break it down And that's why, you know, the elders made this recent decree You know, about a, a name calling And just being professional about the ministry You know um, You know, being blameless You know, being blameless in the sight of the Heavenly Father Okay, because guess what We're public enemy number one in Esau's society, man Okay and the fact of the matter, just like in 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 the wake of John the uh, Rev, I mean John the Baptist, uh, our Lord Yahweh Shai, okay, and other renowned men of the Scriptures who had to suffer wrongfully, they didn't do. They, hey, according to the Scriptures, uh, they didn't do anything wrong, but a lot of them got beheaded, hung upside down, so on and so forth, man. You see, but what did it say is that's acceptable before uh, for the Most High, you know. So how much more? Uh, 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 when you're when you're corrected for something that you've done wrong, you see, ain't no room for excuses, man. Ain't no room for excuses. Uh, let me get this real quick. Uh, 
And this is what uh, we got to understand at the same time. You know, everything is spiritual. We can't look at things carnally. Even though we're in the weakest flesh ever, our mindset should be spiritual. Okay? Um, what is it saying? Uh, what is that? Uh, I believe that's 1 Corinthians. The spiritual man judges of all things. You see? And that's what we're training to be. The judges of the universe, man. Okay? So it says... Um, but the key word, spiritual man judges of all things. So that's uh, our focus, man. You know, trying to stay in the spirit, you know, as much as possible. Uh, and, and filtering everything through the scriptures. This is Job chapter 32. Uh, uh, Job 32, and I started seven. It says, I said, days should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. Verse eight. But there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Okay, so if it, if it comes down to a decree that you may not agree with or, or dislike, you have to understand that there is a spirit within man, especially if it's coming from a man of God that you perceive a man of God. You know, it's not your job to just say, hey, "Man, this guy he may have demons on him." You know, telling us to do this, do that. Hey, he may have, but that's none of your business, man. Okay? It might be a test for you. It might be the most high testing to see if you're going to uh, uh, take heed to 1 Peter's chapter 2. Okay, If you're going to implement that, if you're going to uh, 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 you know, take it cheerfully or, or, or suffer wrongfully. You see? And I hate to quote this devil, you know, Bill Belichick, but that's the reason uh, uh, um, you know, that he says, hey, do your job. And if we do that, hey, we, we should never fall, man. Just do your job, man. You know? Let me get Proverbs. You know, there's it, 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 a, 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 a inspiration or a spirit within man. You know? And you have to understand that. And when you do understand that, then you know that, look, let me do what I need to do. You never know what the Lord is doing. And my short stay in his faith, man, I had to go through that a, 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 a numerable amount of times, man. And that shit don't feel good, man. But once it yields the fruit of you doing that, then you understand why. And guess what? You're built up in the faith. So it's a win-win. Like the scriptures say, it can't be against the truth, but before it. Every scenario builds you up for, uh, uh, you know, Lord willing, uh, what we're fighting for, which is the salvation, man. This is Proverbs chapter 9. Um, we'll start at 7. Proverbs 9 and 7. He that reproveth a scorner giveth to himself shame. And he that rebuketh a wicked man giveth himself a block. Verse 8 is the point. It says, Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Uh, let me see. read that again. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. Okay? So that's just showing you the the, 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 the both sides of the spectrum. You reprove you reprove uh, 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 uh you know a scorner. He gonna hate you, man. Okay? Hey, and that's pretty much the cat the, the category the most high is putting uh men in who, who don't take reproof and rebuke. You see, you see you're viewed as a scorner in the sight of the heavenly father, man. Okay? Because, hey, what is it saying? Uh, what is that? I believe that's uh, the book of Timothy's. Uh, uh, damn, man. I can't, I can't remember. But uh, anyway, uh, verse 8, it says, Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee, man. Okay? Hey, and like I said, man, Initially, hey, you it takes a, 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 a high level of humility to, to, to take it and shut the fuck up, man. Okay, but once you overcome the flesh, because that's all it is, it's the flesh making you buck up because the flesh wants you to be all for self. Okay, this this thing ain't all about self, man. Salakia, this thing ain't all about self. This is about Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, okay, and the duty that he gave us to do. You see, but once you get past the flesh aspect of it. Hey, you love that brother, man. Cause guess what? He didn't have to do that. Now he he you know a brother does, but just say he didn't do that and you weren't corrected on the mistake you made and you continue to make that mistake and then you fall into the hands of the heavenly father, man. You see? That's why we have to look at things spiritually, man. You know, it, it's imperative. Okay. Um do I have any more? Let me see. 
me see. I think I got one more. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's, let's go back to Job. This is the book of Job, chapter five, and I started fifteen. Doesn't really go with the blessing, but it is beautiful. This is Job five and fifteen. It says, but he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth, uh, and from the hand of the mighty. Okay, uh, verse sixteen. So the poor have hope, and iniquity stoppeth her mouth. Verse seventeen. Behold, happy is the man whom the Most High correcteth. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Okay. And the, and the chastening of the Almighty comes in a plethora of ways, man. Okay, um, and mainly through what? Through the men, through the men that are set up above you, or, or men that are, that are around you. Okay, and your job is to not make excuses, because just like the quote said, man, he that is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything, man. Okay, so um, yeah, I'll read this again. It says, "Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth." Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Okay, and we can all attest to that, man. You know, it, it didn't seem pleasant. You know, you know, you might, you, and hey, you might even suffered it wrongfully. Okay, but whenever the Most High did what He needed to do with the certain situation, guess what? You, you, you were, uh, uh, you were renewed, or, or you got a jolt through the Spirit. You see, so, you know, and hey, it was better than correction, man. Oh, and yeah, that scripture popped back in my head. I believe it's in um, 1 Timothy's, the third chapter. Um, damn, Satan. It left again. Yeah, all scripture is given for correction and reproof. You see? That's what this thing is about, man. Hey, because <laughs> we're filthy creatures, man. The scriptures say our righteousness is as a filthy, a dirty rag, man. Okay? So there's a process of us being cleansed and a part and a big part of that is being reproved and given orders. And, and and our job is to never make excuses. Okay. So Lord willing, that was edifying with that. I'll say shalom.